Hey guys, what's up? Oh, I left the, uh, I had to run some errands this morning and I left the door open to the herb room and now it's a little chilly so I'm kicking the heater back on for a second. I'm actually moving my starts out into the greenhouse today. Um, I've been needing to do this but there was a huge thing that um, really helped push me to do this, if you will. I'm gonna sit down before I tell you guys this story. <laughs> so I first wanna take a second to tell you guys, um, there may be things you do that don't work out, right? When you're gardening and you're farming, there are things that we have no control over. And then there are those things that we do have control over and we still just flop, right? Like. I always try to show you guys and tell you guys, like, I am learning with you. I do not know it all. Yes, I may be selling some of my things. Yes, I may do plant sales, but that doesn't take me from, like, student to expert. It takes me from student to more experienced student, right? Like, I'm always learning. So, I started all of my seedlings. Things are looking great. They're doing great, right? And then something has come along that could easily derail me, but I had absolutely no control over this, right? Like, there's nothing I could have done that would have prevented this from happening. Um, yeah, it was just completely out of my control. So I could have, I'm going to tell you guys, don't worry, I am going to tell you guys what actually happened. I could have taken this thing and been super bummed, which initially I was pretty bummed. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. But I could have taken this thing and let it completely defeat me. Or I could be like, you know what, there is nothing I could have done to avoid this situation, for the situation not to happen. So I'm going to shift my gears. I'm going to now go into problem solving mode, figure out well, how do I make sure this doesn't keep happening. Um, and then I'm also going to focus on the things that are doing well. So I'm going to show you guys the things that are doing well right now. And that would be my peppers. All these little guys have popped up. I'm going to up pot these today. They're looking great. Um, I actually up potted. These are my dahlias. Um, here are some carnations over here. But as you guys can see, aside from this little guy, I don't know what happened. These are all looking really, really well. So that's a positive. I've got some eucalyptus back here. Can you guys see? Look how pretty that is. I've never grown eucalyptus before. Also have some goji berries that I've never grown before. So that's exciting. Um, a wonderful viewer of mine sent me these fish peppers that I really wanted. They're these really pretty variegated peppers and I've got a couple of those sprouting. So that's exciting. These are all good things. All good things. So I'm going to focus on these for a hot minute. And I'm going to remember, oh, I've never grown eucalyptus before. This is really cool. I've never grown goji berry. This is really cool. I've had a really stinky pepper season all my seasons of gardening. So this is really exciting. I'm going to focus on all these good things. <laughs> that way I don't get so discouraged when I show you guys what I'm about to show you. Which is this pesty little thing called a mouse. And what this mouse has done is it has gotten into all my eggplants. I had a whole nother tray of eggplants and it has just eaten the top off of them. You guys can see back over here what used to be, oh here we go, what used to be an eggplant is now an eaten off eggplant. Um, it just went through and munched off a lot of those you guys can see right there. It came down here and completely just dug up. <laughs> it wasn't a really smart mouse because you can see it left the evidence. You see the sunflowers over here <laughs> and it's went through just sporadically and dug up all these random seedlings. It got a bunch of seedlings back here, knocked down a plant marker. Just so disheartening like a stinking mouse ate my seedlings. <laughs> 
to laugh about it, right? Like, if I'm not laughing about it, I'm gonna get so frustrated over something I have no control over. A flippin' mouse ate my seedlings. This is so, like, what in the world? This stuff does happen, though, you guys. Like, sometimes things happen out of your control and attitude is everything. Instead of being bummed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately start moving all this stuff out into my greenhouse. We're actually hooking up the heater that's in here hooking it up out there. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to re-sow these and just pray that they germinate quickly and so I can have these for the plant sale. And if not, I'm just gonna cut it as a loss and move on. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time and energy beating myself up over this when I have no control about it. And I was talking with a friend of mine earlier uh, this week about the same thing. Some things flopped uh, that she just didn't know about and she was really just kind of beating herself up about it. And I encouraged her and I'm going to encourage you guys and also just kind of encourage myself in this. This is all a learning experience. We're growing through all of this. Every mistake that we make is a lesson that we don't have to make the following year. Um, it's something that we've learned and we've grown in this season and we're going to do better next time. For me, this was completely out of my control. So, I'm just going to say hats off to the mouse. You got me this time, but you will not get me next time because I'm going to outsmart that little booger. Um, oddly enough, when my seedlings were out in the old greenhouse we were using last year, uh, we had a mouse problem as well. And I started like 300 squash and zucchini plants and a mouse ate them all. Um, and so I've not had that problem since being in here, but obviously... Um, it is a problem. So I'm going to start moving these trays out there. I really am kind of curious to see how hot it is in the greenhouse as well. Um, so yeah, let's go take a look and see what's going on. So it is about 57 degrees outside. The sun's shining. It's been a beautiful day. So if I had to guess, I'm going to assume that the greenhouse is really, really hot. Um, but we'll go see. I obviously don't want to burn up my plants. Um, so I may take this door off of my greenhouse or something. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, so it is 92 degrees in here. Wow. The vent is fully open, so that's good. I'm just wanting to make sure that there's enough airflow. As you can see here, the vent fully open, so that's good. But if I were to bring my seedlings out here right now, it's not going to be good. So I'm not going to do that. I'm probably going to wait until this afternoon. And then I will have to just keep this door propped open to let that airflow come through a lot better. Um, it actually comes off the hinges right here. So in the summertime when I'm growing flowers and things in here, I'll just take the door off completely and allow that good airflow. Um, but yeah, man, I'm going to leave this thing propped open for a minute. It's really hot. So I went to Jessica's house today to work on some stuff. And I came home and Nathan started putting up the electric netting for our meat birds that are coming this week. Um, I'm not sure what day they're supposed to be here, but they are supposed to come this week. So that's really exciting. Um, this is way, way bigger than we thought. I mean, this netting is huge. So we were going to just be moving them and grazing them, but it's so big that they're going to have a huge area. So obviously we'll move it if we need it, um, if we need to, but right now... I don't really know that we'll need to. This is pretty massive. All right, so there it is. Here's our muscadines. And it goes all the way over there. We got this from uh, Gallagher. That's who it's from. But it's big space. Like really big space. Um, yeah, so he's been working on setting all this up. Wow, it's just crazy how big it is. So since it is too hot to move my seedlings in there, I've got some more seeds I need to start. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna move some of my stuff out here and start working. It's way too pretty of a day to be inside. So I don't really care what I have to do as long as I'm out here. I, I really don't care. Nathan's working on finishing the netting, doing some stuff with the rabbits today. I got sent in the seed swap a variegated Cherokee purple. Now, I always talk about 
you know, kind of Cherokee purple as being a hyped up tomato of where we live. And I, I don't really understand the hype. I don't personally just love them. I grew a bunch last year, started a bunch because there was a high demand and my plants kind of flopped. Um, but variegated plants intrigued me. Uh, so when I got these in a swap, I was like, ooh, I want to at least grow one of these to save the seeds and see what they do. So I'm going to start some of that. I wanted to show you guys, I've already got germination on the some of the flowers that I started in those bootstrap farmer trays. Um, which is funny because they were some of the same varieties that I started in just my regular trays and they haven't done well at all. Well, there we go. Uh, so I don't know if that was just because these were like heavily sewed in here or what. Uh, but for instance, the white marigold that I started right here, and these are 50 cell trays. I only got one, two, three, four to germinate. I don't really know what the deal is. Here they are right here. Look at all that germination. So that's really, really exciting. I'm going to set this down because I want you guys to see this. This is pretty cool. All right, let me zoom in. Look right there. You see <laughs> where it's still got the end of the marigold right there on it. Look at all these. Isn't that so cool? These are actually some of the ones that June helped me plant. So that's even extra special. But I am going to grab some more of these. Um, this is what I'm just going to start. I'll link these below. I mentioned the other day I did an entire video um, on these. But I'm going to use those trays and start my tomatoes. Um, I've got to start all my flowers this week for the plant cell and for our farm. And I'm so excited. I'm going to be starting like hundreds of zinnias. Uh, primarily that is the flower I'm going to focus on this year and just really hone in on figuring out like what is the peak harvest for a cut flower especially like a zinnia and i'm afraid instead of adding in all these different varieties of flowers and having to figure out the specific needs of all of those if i just hone in on one flower and know that well then the following year i can add in more flowers and that's kind of what i feel comfortable with um I did go to a nursery today and I bought a bunch of herbs for me to plant in my green stock. I'll head out to my car and show you guys and I bought some other fun stuff. <laughs> Uh-oh, this little guy fell over. I'm actually gonna take him or her and separate it out into all of these little pots. And then I've got all these different, look that's a tricolored variegated sage. I've got thyme, I've got rosemary, lavender, Here's some purple sage back here. Uh, so I'm excited. Look at this. This is a variegated oregano. Isn't that so pretty? And it smells amazing. So yeah, I picked up a few of those today. These are going to go on my green stock. And I'm going to go ahead and move the green stock into the high tunnel. Um, and just go ahead and plant them and see what happens. Now I did end up having some herbs start. Um, or germinate, uh, if you will. So I've got Genevieve's basil, opal, which is just a dark purple, a lime basil, and I have about four or five lavender plants. A little bitty seedling. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, up pot those, grow those out, and see what happens. But I knew that, like, I did not have the time and the energy to spend on herbs for the green stock in enough time. Uh, so I just went ahead and kind of said maybe I'll, I'll work on that uh, next year maybe put an emphasis on it I just had too much going on this year and I think that's good is kind of figuring out your goals and what are realistic and what's taking up too much time and I just realized that trying to get these herbs to grow when I don't know enough about them was taking up so much of my time that all those herbs I just bought were $2.99 uh, pretty pretty cheap so I was just like eh, I'll, I'll, I'll get them next year Look at all these spinaches, although some of them bolted. Um, I showed you guys that the other day. Some of these are still doing good, so I'm gonna go ahead and up pot these and try to keep these. Oh my gosh, look. Y'all see that? The mouse got that one. Just nipped it right off, nipped it right off, nipped it right off. Oh my gosh. That is so, look at that. I mean, literally, it just ate the top off. Man, I mean, you must have been hungry coming in here wreaking havoc on all my stuff. I did buy a fish emulsion fertilizer today. Um, this mix right here was leftover mix and my new mix. Um, as you guys can see, 
there is some yellowing on the leaves uh, some of them look worse than the other there you go you can kind of see that so yellowing uh, on your seedlings is a sign of a nitrogen deficiency. Now that could have been because it was a mix of two different soils and they just didn't mix well together. Um, it could be because I overwater them out of uh, fear that I'm going to forget and they're going to dry up and die. Uh, so there's probably a combination of a lot of things there, but it's actually a pretty easy, quick fix. If you see that on your seedlings, don't throw them out. I remember the first time I saw a deficiency and I had first started seeds, I thought I just ruined them all, so I just threw them away. Um, I found out now that's definitely not the case. You can fix them uh, pretty easily. So I bought some fish emulsion um, and I'll go through and, you know, go ahead and up pot those and give them all a boost um, with that fertilizer. But yeah, these def definitely need to go ahead and be moved out. A lot of you guys have been commenting, why don't you just move your trays closer to the light? Wouldn't that make sense? It would. Yeah, it would definitely make sense. Um, th I wasn't planning on them being in here. I was planning on them being out in, you know, the greenhouse, but we had all that snow. It was still, the temperature was getting down really low, and I didn't even know with bringing in this heater if it would heat that space up enough. Um, now I'm feeling confident with our lows and with the heater that will be fine, but I was just worried. So yeah, I mean, if I was going to stay in here, I would have definitely um, rigged these up to where they could just be lowered over. You can see on my Mars Hydro over there, it's just hanging underneath them. And I've just been raising it up as the plants are growing. And that is definitely ideal. Um, this was just kind of a temporary thing for me. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to be in there long enough for it to matter. Obviously, as you can see, some of them are getting a little stretchy, a little leggy. Uh, so I'm just going to up pot them up. And I, I think they're probably going to be fine. All right, guys, I know this was a short vlog today, but I've got to get busy playing damage control and make sure that I've got everything hooked up in the greenhouse. That way, these seedlings don't spend another night out here. That way, they're not falling victim to another mouse. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me today. If you take anything away from this, remember things happen that you cannot control. However, how you react to that determines everything. Um, and so if something happens when your seed's starting, maybe just things aren't going the way you planned, that is life. There are things that are unpredictable, things that we have no control over. I want to encourage you guys, keep your head up. Find what you can laugh about and laugh about it. And if you can't and you want to be mad for a minute, just be mad for a minute and then move on. Don't let your mistake or something you had no control over um, kind of determine your outcome of your entire season. Don't let that small thing ruin your entire season. Uh, stay positive. Remember, you can do it. Uh, this was a little setback. I'll be honest. It was a setback, but this is not going to define me as a grower, and it's certainly not going to define my season. I'm going to have been upset for a little bit, and then I'm just going to laugh it off because what else can you do? And so I hope that that encourages you guys. If something happens, let it be a hiccup, not a roadblock. But thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.